I found a story that I wanted to do a video on, and as I was doing some research, I came across this young woman's name, and I thought that I would just make a quick video about her. Her name is Kimberly Sue Jones, and she's been missing since February the 2nd, 2009, from Parkersburg, West Virginia. She was a white female, born June 1st, 1983, she was 25 at the time of her disappearance. She was 5 foot tall and 110 pounds. She was last known to be wearing a hooded sweatshirt, a blue jean jacket, and blue jeans. She had brown hair, blue eyes, and a small scar on the front of her neck right in the center. She has a tattoo on her right shoulder of the name Kimmy Sue and a red rose with the name Jack. She wore her hair shoulder length at the time of her disappearance and she speaks with a very raspy voice and she's very quiet and shy. The details of her disappearance. Jones was last seen at her apartment in the Pinewood Village apartment complex on Beverly Street in Parkersburg, West Virginia at 11 p.m. on February the 2nd, 2009. She had spent the day with her ex-boyfriend, Jack Crone, their five-year-old daughter, and Crone's new wife. They had all had dinner together. Crone said he drove Jones back to her apartment, dropped her off in front of the building, and drove away. She has never been heard from again. Jones had received a death benefit pension check as a result of her father's death, and it disappeared with her. After her disappearance, a stop payment was put on the check. No one ever attempted to cash or deposit the check. Her family stated Jones was behaving normally before she went missing. There was no indications at her home that she planned to leave. Her calendar was marked with upcoming appointments, and all of her personal belongings and clothing were left behind. She did not drive or own a vehicle. Foul play is suspected. Her case remains unsolved. Jones was last seen leaving her apartment with her six-year-old daughter, her ex-husband, and his new wife. Jones had told her family that they were all planning to spend the day together, and she was reported missing five days later when her mother was unable to make contact with her. So I'm going to guess, go out on, on a very short limb here and guess that the ex-husband had the daughter this whole time. Had he contacted anyone to say, this, my child's mother has not come to pick her up or, you know, I went by her house to drop my daughter off and she wasn't home. 14 year anniversary of Kimberly Jones goes missing. Her family still looking for answers. This was published on WTAP on February the 3rd, 2023. Today makes 14 years since Kimberly Jones went missing. She was last seen by her neighbors at 11 in the morning, leaving her apartment at his, what is now Oakwood Village. She had her six-year-old daughter with her and left with her ex-husband and his wife. Kimberly's family says that she told them she was planning to spend the day with them, and when she didn't show up later or provide any contact information, her mother filed a missing persons report. Kimberly was a very quiet person. She was really nice, and she enjoyed spending time with her family. She loved her daughter, and she was a really good mom, says her, her sister, Bobby Jones. The family says they want Kimberly to be pronounced dead so that the FBI can take over the investigation. Why hasn't she been pronounced dead in 14 years? So I'm going to ask this question what became of her daughter. My, my guess is her, her father raised her. Was he considered to be a suspect? Was he ever really seriously questioned in this? Her family says, I doubt that she is still alive. 
This is one of those stories that when I started looking up stuff about it to make the video, at first there wasn't a whole lot to go on. It was just the case of a young mother who had gone out for the evening and didn't return home. But the more that I got to investigating into it, I found out a little bit more information. And I wanted to share what I was able to find. Not a whole lot more detail on her, but this story kind of is going to become like a two-parter. First, I'm going to tell her story and what I was able to find about her. And then there's a connection, a possible connection with her case to another person who confessed to murdering a uh, up to five women and whether or not she was one of his victims nobody knows this man recorded and wrote out this long confession to the police and he recorded tapes of himself confessing to these murders now I did not hear all of the tapes and I did not I was not able to find and read the entire confession letter. I'm still looking, so maybe by the time I get to his story, I'll find it and I can give a little bit more detail about him. I watched a video last night and I will share a link to that video in the comments, but before I do, I want to just uh, give a little personal thought. The video that I watched is from a, a group that does like paranormal they go out and they go to like haunted houses or ha houses that are reported to be haunted or that type of thing. They try to reach out to spirits. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with that or don't. I'm just saying that th that was the video that I watched. It was a video that came up when I typed in her name. And what it was was this: these two men had gone out and had a conversation with her sister and they were trying to reach out to her in this spirit world, I guess. And his name, the man's name, kept coming up. And um, so before I move on to talk about him, and I will do that in a separate video, I'm going to share some stuff that I found about her. Now, Kimberly Sue Jones was 25 years old. She was divorced. And she had a four- or five-year-old child at the time. Now, despite the fact that her ex-husband, supposedly, he, he and his new wife had supposedly reported her to Child Protective Services for abuse, the Child Protective Services had come out and investigated her and checked her home and looked into these allegations. They found these allegations to not be to have no basis, and they closed the case. They said they're not going to further investigate her. They saw no signs of any abuse of the child. The house, the apartment that they lived in was clean. This woman had just moved into this apartment, and she'd had some problems in the past, as uh, her sister t d didn't go into detail, but just talked about how she'd suffered some problems in her upbringing and in her life. Her mother was a single mother with, I believe, four or five kids and had moved from Ohio to West Virginia. And most of the family had went back to Ohio, but the Kimberly Sue Jones had stayed in West Virginia with her mom and had gotten with this man, had a child with him, and... So she stayed there because that's where he lived as well. But despite the fact that he and his new wife had reported her and were trying to take the child away from her, they were in a custody dispute, and they had a pending court date coming up. Child Protective Services dismissed the claims and said they, you know, they wrote in their report that everything looked okay to them, and they were not considering the child to be in any danger. So she had told her mother 
that he and his wife had invited her and the little girl out to dinner and to watch movies that night and that she would call her and let her know how it went. So I think that that was her thoughts on it, that she was going over there to make up and, and for them to get along as co-parenting. And she never returned home that night. And he was the last one known to have seen her. Now, here's my thing on this, and her sister brought this up as well in the video that I watched. Her mother did not call and report her missing for five days because she was just really unsure of what was going on. She thought maybe something had happened that they, that she and the child had ended up staying over at his house. Um, keep in mind this was, you know, 2009. Um, I don't know if she carried a cell phone or anything at that time. But the mom waited, and when she finally talked to other members of the family and told them, you know, I haven't been able to get a hold of her, I don't know what's going on, they said it's time to go to the police, something's going on. Keep in mind, in the five days, and the child was supposed to have gone to school the next day, nobody called to check on the child. The school didn't call. Um, the ex-husband said, told the police and told the family that Kimberly had told him to leave the child, at, ch ch that she wanted to leave the child at his house that night, but in no time did he say she ever called to check on the child, she ever called to ask him to bring the child home, and with this custody dispute that, that, that was going on, nobody really believed that she would just up and leave the child there and not even make contact because like CPS had already cleared her of any kind of abuse or neglect and said that she was doing a good job with the child and there's no way her family said that she would just leave the child. This is what leads me to believe no matter what other factors might be brought up, no matter what else might be talked about in her case, I believe that he was behind it all. So. I'll move on now and read what um, other stuff that her sister talked about. When the police started to investigate, they came to her apartment, and a friend of hers had a key to her apartment and left them in. The apartment was untouched. Her friend said it looked exactly like it always did when she was there. She had some medication that she took, and the medication was in the kitchen sitting on the counter. It had not been, there had been no, um, none of the medicine had been taken out of the bottles in those days. Um, there were, when the police checked the answering machine in the apartment, they said that there was inconsistencies that some calls had been deleted, that the numbers were not flashing on the caller ID or the um, voicemail that someone had checked those messages. So they thought maybe Kimberly had returned to the apartment, but there's no way to know if those phone calls were made before or after she left the apartment. She may have deleted some messages herself. The reason that they bring that up is because when they started to investigate and they started to ask her family and friends, were, was there any other people that they needed to go talk to, they brought up two men. One was a man that she had started to date and that he was a little older than her. And once they had started to date, she found out that he had a police record, that he had been in jail and incarcerated for assault of one of his ex-girlfriends. So this concerned her and she decided she wanted to break up with this man she didn't want to date someone and take a risk on being an, another victim. So she, she told her sister that she was going to break up with him, but she was really worried about his reaction and what he might do. But according to her, she told her sister that he came to her front door and that she opened the door and just told him, I'm 
you know, I don't want to see you anymore. I've just decided, you know, we're not going to be continuing to see each other. And he was upset about it, but she had never mentioned him again that she'd had any problems with him after that. It's possible that he may have been watching her and maybe he saw her ex-husband and his family come and pick her up that evening. Maybe he was waiting on her when she returned back to her apartment. But the police cleared him that he had an alibi for that night and so they did not pursue him as a possibility. Now there was another man who was married and she had dated him previously and they had broken up but at some point they had kind of started to talk to each other again and had gotten together again and he had been giving her a little bit of money. Now when the police talked to him they asked him to take a polygraph and he agreed to and he passed the polygraph except for they said that they had asked him a question about if he had had uh, sexual relations with her in the days leading up to her disappearance and he said no but the police said that he failed that part of the polygraph test but he passed the parts about if he had anything to do with her disappearance so they cleared him um, they said that he was a nice guy that he cared about her and her daughter but that he was married and now her sister talked about in the video that she had an upcoming surgery scheduled and that she had made some notes on the on a piece of paper that was laying on the counter next to this paper about her upcoming surgery. Now I didn't go into any detail about what kind of surgery it was and her sister wouldn't talk openly about it so I'm thinking maybe it had something to do with a personal type of surgery and then she brought up this man and said that the two of them had been sleeping together. So I wondered if maybe it was possible that she was planning to have an abortion or some other type of surgery related to that. It didn't say. And, um, but the police cleared him. Now, she lived in an apartment, but it was like a house. And... She had neighbors upstairs, and she had another older woman who lived right next door to her. And when the police talked to these people, they reported that any time anybody went in and out of the main door to the apartments on the first floor, that it made a very loud screeching sound, and that you could hear the door opening and closing. Now, several of her neighbors reported that they did see her leaving that night, that evening that her ex-husband and his wife had come and picked her and the little girl up and that they were going out together. And they reported seeing this, but nobody reported seeing or hearing her return to her apartment that night. The, el the older woman who lived in the apartment next to her said that in order for anybody to pull in in front of Kimberly's apartment door, they would their headlights would flash through her window and she said that nobody had pulled in that night that she was up late that she was a night owl and that she sat up late at night and she reported seeing no headlights and no one come, came, came into the apartment that she remembered hearing when they asked the ex-husband about this, he reported that he didn't pull up in front of the apartment, that he just pulled up out to the street and let her out. One more little note was that she had gotten a check. She, she had the check in her purse. It had not been cashed. That, the check was never cashed um, for $1,400 that she'd gotten just that week from a death benefit from her father who had died. And her sister, everyone, when people started saying after she went missing that maybe she just ran off. Maybe she was just tired of, you know, her life and just decided to leave the little girl with her dad and just leave. 
her sister said absolutely not because even if she wanted to leave her life behind she would definitely have cashed that check and it was never cashed never to this day um, nobody ever found the check she didn't have it in the apartment it wasn't in the apartment so she must have had it with her did the ex-husband and his wife think that they could cash that check and some people believe that the intention was to take her and force her to cash the check and give them the money but like I said nobody ever cashed the check so she if she left her life behind on purpose why would she not have cashed that check and everyone who knew her said there was no way she would have done that she knew that she was going to win this custody case in court she had a job she had an apartment her daughter was doing well and the CPS had found no reason to believe that she was being abused so that's what brings me on to the story of this other man now he was not a suspect there, there was no connection between the two of them that anybody knew about until he made these confession tapes and sent these confession tapes into the local police and claimed to have murdered five at least five women and um, buried them on some property that he had and they believe and whether or not he mentioned her by name like I said I couldn't find anything that said that he did but I am going to look into that a little farther before I make the video about him but police investigated him as a possibility of having been involved in Kimberly's disappearance she never returned home her daughter was taken out of school immediately according to the sister the ex-husband removed the child from public school within days if not the very next day and never returned her to public school and kept her in home private school um, the daughter would be 19 years old today and the family of Kimberly has had no contact with her uh, her grandmother passed away the Kim's mother passed away and other than her sister there's really been no one else really pushing the police to keep her case alive and being investigated. And I think that the police really wanted to find a connection between her and this James Childers, who was a, a self-professed, self-confessed serial killer. And... Um, like I said, I'm going to do a little bit more research and then make a video about him and how it came about that he was investigated as being possibly mixed up with her. That was really all I could find on her case. And maybe one day the truth will come out about her. Maybe the child knew more. or maybe And they, they questioned the ex-wife. Or, I mean, the, they questioned the ex-husband's wife and she said that after they had watched movies she had laid down and went to sleep and that he drove the the woman home Kim he drove Kim home and dropped her off and then came back she told the police that she was in the bed asleep when he returned home and she didn't know what time it was but according to him, he told the police that he left his apartment with Kim at about 10 o'clock and then drove back home. And like I said, none of the neighbors that lived in her apartment complex reported hearing any cars or anything. So, I, like I say, this is my own personal opinion to wrap this video up. I believe that he was involved with it. I don't believe that they spent the day together going out to shop and eat and, and, and unless someone came forward and said yeah we saw them all together in a restaurant or a grocery store or Walmart or whatever I believe that um, his intention 
when he went to her apartment that day and picked her up. And I believe that he did something to her very early that day. I believe his wife had the children, had the little girl with her while he went out and took care of getting rid of Kimberly and disposing of her body. Now, another little note I'll make real quick before I end this video is that the police said on the night that she disappeared, it was bitter cold and the ground was frozen hard as a rock, that there was snowfall on the ground and the water, the lakes and things nearby were frigid, would have been mostly ice, a lot of them would have had ice on them. Um, and they don't believe that she was buried because unless someone had access to some type of equipment, there was no way that they could have dug through the frozen ground by hand. So they don't know what could have happened to her remains. But I, that's my belief that he... Maybe he tried to force her to cash that check and she wouldn't. He had, it was reported by her sister that he had come to the mother's house not long after he and Kimberly had split up and was with this other woman and told her, I'm going to marry her and take the little girl away from you. We don't need you. But when CPS deemed her fit, to keep her child and was not going to make her, force her to give up custody, he saw that he was not going to win a custody dispute. And I believe that he killed her so that he could keep the child and he wouldn't have to pay child support and he and his new wife could raise the little girl. And that's really all I have to report on that. I will make this other video and I will link it. I will put a link in the comments, and I will link the video. And I appreciate everyone for sticking around to listen. Thanks for watching.